On September 22, 2021, plans for a second MCL tournament had begun to take place. Living Logic, the host for OCO's Fall 2021 tournament, had appointed Orca to be the host for Mania Collegiate League for the 2021-2022 school year. Plans were starting to be formed by Orca with the tentative starting date for MCL 2022 was originally scheduled to start in February, but unfortunately around March 2022, due to various factors, Orca is unable to host Mania Collegiate League. So around that time, the possibility of having MCL to happen for this school year is very unlikely. On March 24, 2022, OCL has appointed me and Jianxi to be co-hosts for MCL 2022. Mr. Chicken was looking for anyone who would be able to take the hosting role, and I volunteered to host for MCL. Someone in the OCL Discord server suggested that Jianxi should also be a host, and so me and Jianxi were elected to be co-hosts for MCL 2022. Even though I had staffed for OSU tournaments for 6 months, I did have a lot of experience staffing for OSU Mania tournaments. It also helped that I recently staffed for OCL Winter 2022 tournament that just ended recently at the time, so I instantly got to work. Over the next few weeks, I did a lot of things behind the scenes to make sure MCL is absolutely set to proceed with the official announcement. The tentative dates I put initially was delayed due to a lot of personal events that happened to be around that time. And finally, on Tuesday, April 19th, 2022, the forum post went live and MCL has finally been announced to return for the second time. 72 players from 37 universities in 4 countries have signed up to participate in this unique tournament. However, 19 universities only had one player participating. Given that I feel bad about not letting a quarter of the players participate, I decided to merge players into joining other universities or create teams of single players from different universities. In the end, 20 teams were in the Mania Collegiate League this summer, and all that's left to do is the matches to commence. They were uh, well above both players from Bro and L here, about two tenths of a oh, no. difference, but Chu, the accuracy here, 99.6 to 99.6, Tasty Dumpling rivaling here, and that miss is really going to start to come into effect here as we get into the last quarter of the map. Yeah, Brunel's just, if they're able to keep this combo, I think they can definitely take it. Chu with those, a lot of uh, 200s, just going down all the way to Tasty Dumpling tag is not great. And right now they have a pretty secure lead and there's not much left in the map unless any player on Brunel misses. I think this should be a point for them. Yeah, so a consistency coming through for Bro and L and they're going to be able to take this first break point in this match. Wow, that's very, very unsuspected. It looks like Zero T Snow had some lag and that's why the miss happened. Attention to their own performances, which is just impressive to see. And especially with Goldak, who has a higher accuracy than... Um, or domain right now. Yeah, absolutely. Goldak known more for, for being a physical rice player, holding their own on the hybrids here. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the structures aren't too complicated, and this rice patterning is probably right at home for them. So, unsurprising there. And that is going to be a third point for Catalonia here. An impressive team score 1.989 for both of them in those 990 range. Oh my goodness. That being said, I... Soda has the combo. And, and oh, they're climbing. The high kids drop so. And we're gonna trade the back though. Oh, trade the back. Oh my goodness. This is going to be interesting how the finish is going to happen. But that lead for Rochester Order is map just left to go. Treading. Soda needs to hold on. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They're playing tug of war with the leaderboard right now. It's oh, the high kids versus Soda here. It's it, Soda has to stay strong. They have to hold on to the combo here. 1700 highest in the lobby. Jackson is actually the best supporting combo oh, here right now. And oh goes down, but Jackson oh, trades it back. No, that's it. That is oh, it. Oh no. They were so close. <laughs> they were that, so close. That had no business being as oh. close as it was. And I, just as I was saying, stay, stay high kids. He was in that 99% range, 950,000 to that 935. It's amazing what a percent difference can do. So far, we are seeing, oh, we are seeing North Texas really extending that lead. It's, and I believe, oh, ornamental mode. I did not see ornamental uh, with the break, however. 
Yeah, as we approach the back half, and there's another one just in case you didn't see it earlier. So, okay, yeah. it's the tale of two halves of this uh, lobby right now. Clarion and Game going at it against each other. And it looks like, I think Game had the higher accuracy at the end of the day, but it was just the consistency between that bottom half of the lobby that really carried UNT through to the end, as you can see. Lead right there. They're just going to have to hold on if they are able to do so. Chew with uh, probably a bigger break than um, I got to be talking about. I got to be again. Oh, the oh, oh, final break. And oh, I got to be talking about multiple, multiple breaks. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Out. Oh my goodness, what is happening with Kazumi-chan? This is unbelievable! That was an anticlimactic moment right there. What happened with Kazumi-chan's keyboard? Oh no, of all times for it to encounter... Oh god, I hope it's not a wireless keyboard and the battery died. Quite a huge factor here. That was a massive drop from RCAT falling from that 99.7 down to the 99.3 range, meeting up with Arpia down in the bottom. But Arpia finds a drop now, going into the last quarter of the map, and that's going to give De La Salle University an opportunity to take this lead back. It immediately starts shifting over to the right now. And if both the De La Salle players can hold RCAT back over that 400 combo cap, Arpia just barely now getting there, but there's not a lot of map left. And now accuracy becomes an issue. Piggy finds a drop now, and that's basically going to steal the deal here for De La Salle University. It was looking pretty dicey there after that first miss from Arcab, but no harm, no foul going into the last sliver of map here. The lead extending for De La Salle. Silhouette L is the last remaining FC, and that was on these rice picks has been a little too much to overcome for De La Salle University today. And as the map begins to wind down, last sliver left to go, it would take a monstrous collapse from the University of Waterloo to hand this point back over. And it is not going to be enough from De La Salle. The University of Waterloo A is going to take this match 6-4 to four and punch their ticket into the winner's grand finals. Great, but Zero to Snow still broke at the beginning and all Silk with the break. This is going oh, to give the lead huge. running back to San Diego. I was saying that Zero broke right at the start, so it would hurt San Diego too much, but Silk broke just when players are, when both of these, all four of these players are at the 400 combo mark, so that's going to hurt Hong Kong more than, it, than that break for Zero to Snow um, would hurt San Diego. So now San Diego's in the lead, but can they hold on until the end? And we see Chu with the break, however. Uh, but so here we trade it. Chu trades it right back. Oh my goodness, Chu with the break. And Sorry will break again, but with another sealed break, it. and that's just going to be it. You see, San Diego will take another break. Finally, in the lead them as well lest waterloo try and take this pick back the lead is shrinking they are making strides in this lead last sliver of map oh, left to go 1, points this is getting super close the accuracy falls from sora Eero just a little bit 99.64 oh, 99.52 no. they found a drop here at the end and the lead immediately swings over to waterloo oh my goodness they had it in the bag it was looking on course to be a break point a crucial break point for the oh, hong kong wait, polytechnic Gino. university but wait gd oh. namto is finding a couple of drops oh my goodness at oh the very end gosh. of the map oh my gosh hong kong polytechnic university just just what the heck was that that is the break point to end all break Four players holding on to the full combo oh, the story hero drops no. No, that's not good for um, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. A devastating uh, drop here, entering the back half of the map. Silky oh, follows no. closely behind, and the writing is starting to be written on the walls. The engraving on the metaphorical trophy has begun. The University of Waterloo A, the only two players left with the full combos. This lead is quickly becoming insurmountable here. 99.61, 99.73. The accuracies from the Waterloo players a consistent battery throughout their three-man squad has been a force to be reckoned with so far this tournament it has been a valiant effort from all teams involved to try and contest this absolute juggernaut the hong kong polytechnic university gave it the best shot that they could but as this map winds down your mania collegiate league champions are going to be the university of waterloo a squad
After the grand finals, it was the University of Waterloo AA team that won the Mania Collegiate League for the 2021-2022 school year, with the Hong Kong Polytechnic University rounding out second and De La Salle University A getting third. The top three that made the podium earns OSU supporter coming from my bank account. But aside from losing so much money, that is the end of the Mania Collegiate League Summer 2022. To say that it was fun is an understatement. I had a blast hosting a tournament for the first time, and initially, when I took up this hosting opportunity, I was super bummed out at first that I couldn't participate as a player, but I was fine hosting for the first time, and I'm really glad that it turned out very well. I would like to take the time to say thank you to everyone who have been involved with MCL, whether if you're a player, a staffer, or simply a lurker, thank you for your support on this tournament. By the time you're watching this video, I am starting to shift my attention into Mania Collegiate League 2023, and I'm trying to address the flaws that happened during this tournament, and I'm looking for ways to improve to ensure that the next tournament will be a much better experience for everyone. But other than that, that will be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys like this video, please leave a thumbs up and comment in the comment section for me. If you guys want to see any future notifications, please hit the subscribe button. And yeah, that's just going to be it. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care everyone.